anyway, for this video, what we're going to do is we're going to solve um, a polynomial inequality. Basically, what we're looking for is all values of x that when I plug them in will give me an output that is less than or equal to zero. So basically, what we are looking for is all x values with an output that is negative or zero. Because it's equal to, we could have it equal to zero also. That would be included in our solution. So with this, what we must first do is find the zeros of the polynomial that we're given. And the zeros are always the turning points of a graph. It's where it crosses or touches the x-axis. So with this one, basically what we're going to do is we're just going to solve the equation x cubed minus 2x squared minus 24x is equal to 0. So with a polynomial, there is a lot of different methods of solving it. For this particular one, it is factorable. So the first thing that I want to do is take out the common term of x. So I'm going to take out x from everything. When I remove 1x, I'm now left with two of them. Since I had three to start with, I took one out. So now I have two. I have two x's here. I took one out. So now I would just be left with one. And on the last one, I only had one x. I took it out. So I don't have an x remaining. This is not fully factorable, fa or sorry, fully factored yet. So with this, we're looking for two numbers. Remember that multiply together to give us negative 24, that add up to be negative 2. Um, so with this, because of the fact that we want it to be negative, that tells me one of them must be positive. One solution must be negative. And in this case, because we have a negative 2 in the middle, that tells us that our negative value, we want it to be um, the larger of the two numbers. So 6 times 4 would give us the um, values that we would like because 4 times negative 6 is negative 24 and 4 plus negative 6 gives me negative 2 in the middle. So our zeros, we have 3 in this case. x can equal 0. The expression x plus 4 could also equal 0 so that tells us that we have another 0 at negative 4. And then x minus 6 could also equal 0, so x equals 6. So these three values are the three zeros for this polynomial, in, or for this polynomial equation. Um, and like I said, what we are doing is we're trying to figure out, we know that this crosses our graph at 0, negative 4, and 6. So if I put a dot at 0... Um, for this, it can also equal this because of the fact, so I'm going to just fill this in, which tells me that in interval notation, I would use a bracket. So we would have 0 at negative 4 is another place that it would cross, and at 6 is another place that it would cross. So it crosses the x-axis at all of these. So what we want to do when we're solving this algebraically, what we want to do is, and I'm going to use the factored form just because it's easier to see what's going on. Um, I'm going to pick values for x, and I'm going to plug it into the factored form of this, the x times x plus 4. We can use the original one. Um, the factored form just makes it easier to see. And then we're going to look at the output of our the sign of our output. Okay, so what we need to do is every time at zero, it's either going to touch or it's going to cross at this point. So we're going to look for a number that's to the left of negative four. So the first one is negative five. We're going to look for a number between negative four and zero. So I'm just going to use negative one. We're going to use a number between zero and six. So I'm going to use positive one. And then we're going to use a number that is to um, the right-hand side of 6. And you can pick any number in that interval. You don't have to pick the ones that I picked. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to plug this in. And I'm simply looking at what sign would happen because that's what I want to know is the sign of the, fall, the final one. So in the first one, I would have a negative sign. The second one, if I take a negative 5 plus 4, that would give me a negative. And then a negative and a negative would also give me a negative. So if I multiply this um, through, we end up with a negative sign at the end. So our final would be negative. For negative 1, we would have a negative. The middle one would be positive because 4 minus 1 is positive 3. 
And then negative 1 minus 6 would also give me a negative, so that tells me that when I multiply this out, I would have a positive answer because a negative times a positive is a negative and a negative times a negative is a positive. If it makes it easier, you can always plug in the numbers. I always just am looking at the sign. Um, for this one, I would have a positive first. 1 plus 4 would give me a positive, and then 1 minus 6 would give me a negative value. So my final would be negative. And then for the last one, we would have a positive, a positive, and a positive. And since they're all positive, that would give me a positive. So that's telling me that any number over here is going to yield a negative. Any value between negative 4 and 0 is going to give me a positive. Any value between 0 and 6 is going to give me a negative. And any value to the right of 6 is going to give me a positive. So if you recall, if we go back to our original equation, we'll look for all negative values. So now all we have to do is simply write our answer. So we would start at negative infinity. And we would go up to negative 4. Remember, because it's less than or equal to, it can include it. Um, and then we also have another negative from 0 to 6, so we would again put those in brackets. And that would be our answer in interval notation. If you're using set notation, you would just use the brackets and say x such that x is less than or equal to negative 4, or x is greater than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to 6. Um, with this, just so that you can see visually what is happening with this, you can use a graphing calculator to help you see um, that it's negative or just to check your work to make sure that it works out. Um, so with this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the TI Inspire for this one, and I'm just going to open up a graph screen. So I'm just going to do a new document, and I'm going to choose option 2, Graphs. And I'm just going to plug in the original equation to make sure that I factored everything OK. So I'm going to have x to the third power. Make sure you get out of the exponent. Um, minus 2, and we're going to use x squared. And then minus 24x. So just always make sure that you plugged it in correctly. So we have x cubed minus 2x squared minus 24x. So I'm just graphing the equation of this. It's not going to do any shading or anything like that. All it's going to do is we're just graphing the left-hand side of the inequality. And I'm going to hit Enter. And when I do that, it's kind of hard to see. So I'm going to go to Menu, and I'm going to choose Option 4. And I want to zoom fit. I'm just going to zoom it out so that it fits in there. And if you see, we can see that from here to here it's positive, from here to here it's negative. And since we were looking for negative values, we can see that from negative infinity all the way up to negative 4, that our graph is below um, the x-axis, so it's negative. And then again, from 0 to 6, it does dip below the x-axis again, which means that it has a negative output. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need clarification or there's any other topics that you need help with that you don't see, just please let me know.